Psalms 116, appreciate all the good testimonies. This psalm's got uh, a lot of preaching in it. This psalm, the psalmist had got to such a low point he thought he was going to die. He called on the Lord and the Lord inclined unto him. The Lord heard and answered his prayer. The Lord did great things for him. And this psalm concludes in verse number 16. He says, O Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thine handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people in the courts of, of the Lord's house in the midst of thee. O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. We thank you, Lord, for the good testimonies. We certainly thank you for being a good and faithful and merciful God. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us from the Scriptures. Lord, we've already been blessed. But, Lord, I pray you'd edify us. You'd enlighten our minds. And Lord, you'd help us to grow closer to Christ. Lord, meet every need of every heart. Meet every need of every family. Father, certainly touch those that are sick. Thank you for Miss Mary having a good day. I pray you'd continue to help her. I certainly pray for Brother Eddie, that Lord, you'd touch him and help him. I pray for Brother Bob tomorrow, that Lord, you'd be with him and his surgery would go well. Be with the Kirtmans that are sick and Miss Marcy and others that are not feeling well. Be with those that are traveling and those that will be traveling. But Lord, for the next few minutes, sit down amongst us. Help us from the scriptures and we'll not fail to bless you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen and amen. I want you to know something about the psalmist. Notice first of all, his deliverance in verse 16. It ends with saying, he says, Thou hast loosed my bonds. My dear friends, we were bound and chained to our sin. But aren't you glad for the day the Lord came by and he delivered us uh, by forgiving us and cleansing us from all sin. Uh, Jesus went to the cross of Calvary. Uh, he shed his blood uh, for one reason, uh, and that was to be able to atone for our sins. Uh, my dear friends, aren't you glad for the day? Uh, Somebody told you about the Lord, uh, and the Lord started dealing with you about your sin, uh, started dealing with you about uh, needing to be saved. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I didn't understand everything that I needed to know about where I was and where I was headed. Uh, I just knew something was missing, uh, and I'm glad uh, my mother told me uh, what it meant to be saved. Uh, now I'm glad my granddaddy preached uh, what it meant to be saved. Uh, and I'm glad for that night uh, when I got tired of being lost uh, and I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and he saved me uh, and he loosed my bonds uh, and he set me free, uh, birthed me into the family of God, uh, made a new creature out of me. Uh, I didn't understand all that that night. Uh, all I knew is I needed the Lord, uh, and I'm glad. Uh, hey, he heard my cry, uh, and he came to where I was, uh, and he did something for me nobody else could do. Uh, I'm glad he loosed my bonds. Uh, we see the deliverance of the psalmist. Uh, if you've never been delivered, i got good news. Jesus will deliver you tonight. There's nothing like being saved. Uh, we see the deliverance of the psalmist. Uh, if you will, notice the dedication of the psalmist. Uh, he said, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving uh, and will call upon the name of the Lord. Uh, notice he didn't say I might uh, or if it's convenient uh, or if nothing else is going on. Uh, he shows his dedication. Uh, he said, I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Uh, I will uh, uh, perform my vows before the Lord. Uh, he was dedicated. Uh, aren't you glad the Lord's faithful and true uh, and did his part? Uh, but you and I uh, are not exempt from our part. Uh, because God has saved us, uh, we ought to want to be faithful and dedicated unto him. Uh, it amazes me how many people claim to be Christian, but their life don't back it up. 
Uh, if we're carrying his name, our life ought to show that we are truly Christ-like. Uh, we see his deliverance. We see his dedication. But notice his diligence in verse 18. He said, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. He was diligent. It's one thing to pray when nobody's around. It's another thing when the whole church house is full and you've got to stand up and say something for the Lord. Huh? It shows his diligence. But then notice, if you will, his delight. Look what he says. Verse 19, the courts of the Lord's house in the midst of the old Jerusalem. He says, praise ye the Lord. His delight was the Lord. He said, we need to praise the Lord. And I appreciate those of you that praise the Lord tonight. I'm interested in verse 17. I don't know how many times I've read this psalm. I've got notes all over it from how many, how many times I've made notes on it. But I never really paid attention to this phrase. He said, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And I want to preach on that thought for just a few minutes tonight, on the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Now, what the term is dealing with is the meat offering. The meat offering was an offering of thanksgiving to the Lord. And the meat offering under the law, it was dressed a certain way, uh, and it was done to show uh, thanksgiving. There was a sacrifice. Something had to die, uh, and uh, it was to show your thanksgiving towards the Lord. Uh, but that phrase just stuck out at me. The sacrifice of thanksgiving. Can I say that when we think about thanksgiving, and by the way, thanksgiving is a Christian holiday. Mm. But when we think about thanksgiving, we think about the bounty of the Lord. We think about the blessings of the Lord. We think about the pilgrims uh, and, and the Indians come together and sharing a meal. And we think about the goodness of God and how he's provided and all that he's done. Uh, and it's a good time every day, uh, 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 week of the year to take time and reflect on how good God's been to you. But at least uh, we have a holiday where we're supposed to uh, enjoy our family, enjoy the provisions of God, enjoy the bounty of God and the blessings of God. Uh, and that's what we think about some of these boys think about football but I mean that's what we think about you know when I think about Thanksgiving I think about putting on the feed bag I really do I like it no huh? and Miss Annette made the most juicy turkey I mean it was so good. this is the first year in my memory because we always have a turkey and a honey baked ham this is the first year in my memory I ate more turkey than I eat ham but let me make no mistake brother Tony I ate both oh huh? because uh, I like to eat and I like Thanksgiving I like being frank on uh, you know everybody loves Raymond I like to where I got to loosen my belt a few notches because I'm going to eat you know what I mean don't you like to eat Amen. some of you acting like I'm talking bad language I mean we're talking about Thanksgiving uh, we like to eat uh, even if it's bad you can smother it in gravy and get it down you know what I mean well, but this talks about something totally different. It doesn't talk about the bounty and the blessing. You know, so seldom do we think about what is required of us for such blessings, for such a bounty. What does God really require of us? I mean, we, we just are truly thankful and we appreciate that God provides the big Thanksgiving meal and all the blessings. But what does God require of us for those blessings? He requires the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Well, I got to thinking about the, what that demands. The sacrifice of thanksgiving, first of all, demands an offering. Look again in verse number 17. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Now again, look with me in uh, uh, verse 3. He said, The sorrows of death compassed me, and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. He thought he was going to die. But God's delivered him. God's loosed the bonds. Uh, uh, God has brought him uh, back to the land of the living, and he's uh, uh, faring well. And he says, As a result of the goodness of God, I will offer to thee the sacrifice 
of thanksgiving. The psalmist in Psalms 50, 14 says, Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. You see, when it comes to dealing with the bounty and the blessings of God, just like salvation, it didn't cost us anything, but it cost God everything. God gave His Son for us. Well, God's the one that provides every need that we have in our lives. Uh, and God's the one that, uh, not only this Thursday, but He puts food on your table every day. Uh, hey, He puts health in your body. Uh, he puts fuel in your tank. Uh, he meets your needs. He pays your bills. Uh, he's giving you the strength and the health to work your job. He's the one that takes care of you. Uh, and friend, that comes at a cost, whether or not you realize it. And he says, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. We need to offer something to God for all of his goodness. Now listen, we have nothing to offer him that impress him. Hmm? Shoot, I look in the mirror, I'm not impressed at all. Huh? I mean, what could we give God for all of his blessings? Huh? God who took nothing and made everything. God who makes sunsets and makes sunrises. Uh, God who makes rainbows. And God uh, who grows flowers. And God who does all these beautiful things. What could we do that would ever impress God? Nothing. But one thing we can do is we can praise Him. We can offer Him the sacrifice of praise. We can let people know how much we appreciate the goodness of God in our lives. Can I say it's a sacrifice of thanksgiving? It's an offering. And can I say, can I use a pet peeve right now? If I'm going to make somebody mad if they watch this. Does anybody know what these are used for? Even more so than an offering. This is a form of worship. We're giving back to God. Worship is giving back to God unreservedly what's due Him. A lot of churches are doing away with this because they don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. They don't want to make anybody feel obligated. They don't want somebody that doesn't have anything to put in there to feel forced to put something in there. So they're putting little boxes on the way out, and if you just want to put something in there, you can put something in there. They're robbing people of worship. Can I say, we are try trying to make it so easy for people to come to church and not be connected to God. Right. But let me help you with something. Coming to church means to worship and adore and become more connected to God. And offering to God means you may have to do something that is uncomfortable with your flesh, but anything that embarrasses you brings glory to God. Are you listening? And so offering the sacrifice of thanksgiving means that we will truly worship God at any cost. Hmm? By the way, worship is a verb. It's an action word. So it means you are required to act. And so the offering of thanksgiving is even when it's not convenient, even when you don't feel like it, even when... Your world is turned upside down. God is still worthy of your praise. And the offering of thanksgiving, the sacrifice of thanksgiving is, I'm going to praise God whether I feel like it or not. So we see that the sacrifice of thanksgiving demands an offering, but it also demands omission. Yielding yourself for the will and goodness of God. The Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 30, He must increase, but I must decrease. Now we live in a religious uh, 
a, a society and a society of quote unquote Christianity where man increases and God's got to come down to our level. That's why every modern Bible takes out the blood of Jesus Christ because it's taken out the deity of Christ. It's trying to make him down just to be a man. No, he was the God man. He was all God. He was all man. His blood wasn't our blood. His blood was royal, redeeming, righteous blood. Duh. His blood, my dear friends, is what it takes to be the propitiation for our sin. Our blood was tainted by sin. Hmm? If Jesus was just a man, we're all on our way to hell. Hmm? If he was just a prophet, we're all on our way to hell. If he was just a, a, a good, righteous man that was a religious leader, there's no hope for mankind. Hmm? But see, he wasn't. He's God. And the sacrifice of thanksgiving, we openly and internally must omit ourselves by making him God in our lives. Uh, the best illustration I can come up with, and by the way, listen to me, I hate what baseball's become. Remember when we used to play? It was a whole different game. You know, I, I used to love, I used to breathe baseball. That's my land. I'd sleep with a ball glove. I'm not kidding you. I loved it. Uh, loved everything about it. Loved the science of the game. Uh, back when I played, the inside part of the plate belonged to the pitcher. If you got up close on the plate and I was pitching, I was putting you on your rear end. I was throwing one head high, so you'd back up, then I'd throw one on the outside corner that you couldn't hit. You know, that was baseball. You know baseball. It's changed. Now it's sissified. Now they wind the ball so hard uh, that even somebody built like me can hit one out. Huh? Used to, if you hit one out, you had to hit that thing. Huh? But it's changed. One aspect of the game that has changed is something we live by. Baseball's a game of inches. Not anymore. It's all about putting runs on the on the scoreboard so people will come into the stands because nobody likes defense. But what we used to do was something called a sacrifice bunt. People don't like bunt today, Brother Brian, because if I got too many sacrifice bunts or I, I get out too many times, it, it, it hurts my uh, batting average and, you know, it, it hurts my uh, uh, run, run to going OPS, whatever that is, and all this other stuff. So when I'm up for a new contract, I don't get paid as much. Money's ruined every sport, by the way. Boy, well, do you see what happens with college football over the next few years when everybody leaves every team every year because so, they're getting paid now when they go into this portal thing. I, don't, I thought a portal things wouldn't beat me up Scotty. I didn't know what in the world this stuff is. But a sacrifice bump was I yield my right and my bat to get on base. I give myself up for the advancement of another runner. Hmm? Can I say that in Christianity, we need to yield ourselves for the advancement of the cause of Christ. And the sacrifice of thanksgiving is not, not, not I, but Christ that liveth in me. It's not about me. He must increase. I must decrease. Uh, and uh, uh, no matter what it is, I'm willing to sacrifice myself for the honor and glory of God. Yet, most people think it's all about us. Uh, listen, it is not by accident that we have to God be the glory when you're looking when you come in and worthy is the Lamb when you're going out. Because it's all about Him. And my dear friends, the sacrifice of thanksgiving demands an offering, it demands a mission. But can I say this? It also demands obedience. Look at verse number nine. Look what the psalmist says. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Now listen, I understand that we're living in a society that never sleeps. We're living in a day where everybody's going a million miles an hour. We live in a day where there's not enough hours in the day. And we're constantly striving to do more, do more, do more, do more, do more. 
But unfortunately, we don't take time to sit back and think, did I really walk before the Lord in the land of the living today? We're so busy walking. Now, I'm not talking about living in sin. I'm not talking about uh, 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 being foul-mouthed and not living right and all that. We're living right, but we're not consciously living before the Lord in the land of the living. Huh? Why do you think he left us here after he saved us? If it was all about going to heaven, Miss Cinder, why didn't he take you to heaven the night you got saved? God, in his providence, has chosen to use humans to interact with humans to show his glory. He has chosen to use you and I to be light and salt to this dark and depressed world. He's chosen for the world to see what he can do in a wretch when he saves them and changes them. And my dear friends, that comes about by us not just learning to be obedient, but choosing to be obedient. The psalmist said in Psalms 119 and verse 112, I have inclined mine heart to perform thy statutes always even unto the end. That's a conscious choice that I'm going to be obedient. If God said thou shalt, I'm going to do my best to thou shalt. If he said thou shalt not, I'm going to do my best to thou shalt not. And we need to learn to live within the pages of the word of God. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. But when we do obey and live a life that is a sacrifice of thanksgiving and obedience, the world knows we don't belong here. You don't have to tell those people that think they're dogs and cats that we're different. They know it. Hmm? They know it by our speech, by our attitude. They even know it by our compassion. Because uh, it's only by God's grace I don't go up and tell some of them, you're crazy. Hmm? Uh, they think I'm crazy. When they stand before the Lord, they'll find out. But can I say, they need to be presented to the Lord before they stand before the Lord. And that happens by us offering the sacrifice of thanksgiving. There's a lot of times we need to learn to hold our tongue. I've tried to learn that over years. It doesn't always work out. I'm still guilty of trying to put Jesus on the shelf every now and then. That doesn't work too well. But uh, we've got to learn by yielding and being obedient. Folks will see a whole different personality, spirit, and individual than they're seeing in this world. Let me ask you a question. Here's a poll question. How many of you trust politicians? Can I say, only about 16% of America does. Why is that? Because their actions have dictated that. Well, it's no big deal for us not to trust politicians. Let me ask you this, how many of you trust Christians? Can I say it's not much higher margin that they trust Christians? Because a lot of them have been done wrong by somebody that goes to some form of a church. Hmm. So we ought to show them something different. Hmm. The sacrifice of thanksgiving demands an offering, demands a mission, demands obedience. But it also demands obeisance. What is obeisance, preacher? That means we're to reverence God. The Old Testament word is fear the Lord. We're to reverence Him with every facet of our lives. Hmm? I know this is going to really go over real well right here, but do you know that worry is a sin? We're to trust the Lord. We're to have faith in the Lord. Without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. How can we trust Him? How can we have faith in Him? Well, if we reverence Him. We'll trust him. 
Hmm? Every little boy thinks his dad, daddy is the strongest and smartest and best man in the world. Go back there and ask little Isaiah. He'll tell him his daddy's the smartest daddy and best looking daddy. And he'll wake up one of these days. But right now, he's, he thinks that. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. If you like muscle cars, talk to Isaiah. That little boy knows every muscle car that's ever been built. He does. Where did he learn that? From his daddy. Hmm? He reverences his daddy. He thinks there's nobody like him. If his daddy tells him that a Camaro is the fastest thing in the world, guess what he's going to believe? That Camaro is the fastest thing in the world. Hmm? Huh? Why? Because his daddy told him. He believes everything his daddy says. But see, something happens to us. We get up about Fred's age and we think we know more than our daddy. <laughs> Don't you? Just admit it. You're in church. Thank you. Huh? I know your daddy. You probably do. But anyway, that's an old other thing. <laughs> Something happens to us as we start to mature, as we start to face some things in life. We start realizing things that we thought were so aren't so. Our daddy isn't the strongest. He isn't the smartest. Kaylee learned that early on. Huh? But can I say our Heavenly Father, He is the strongest. He is the smartest. He'll never do you wrong. But somewhere in our Christian life, we start going through storms, start going through some heartaches, start going through some pressures, start learning to depend on ourselves rather than get into Scriptures and get a verse from the Lord. And somewhere along the line, we're not wicked. We just become worrisome because we're not trusting in the Lord. Obeisance means I'm going to reverence the Lord. I'm going to trust Him no matter what. Lord, help us to get back to that. Remember when you first got saved? You couldn't get enough of the Lord. Huh? Remember... Songs you never heard before, and all of a sudden they meant so much to you. Remember when you started reading the Bible and you didn't know that was in the Bible, and there it is, and all that? What happened to us? We got used to it. It's just the Bible, it's not God's Word anymore. It's just church, it's not an opportunity to worship God anymore. Obeisance. When we learn the sacrifice of thanksgiving, we are truly automatically reverencing the Lord and putting him in his rightful place. It not only means reverence, but it also means having a respectful attitude towards him. Hmm? Can I say there are some things that I don't do, not because they're not wrong, but because I don't think it will please the Lord. Paul said all things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. There are some things that I just don't need to do. Because it's not respectful towards the Lord. Hmm? Lord, help us to have a respectful attitude toward the, toward the Lord. You know, when you have a respectful attitude toward the Lord, you won't come into His house and sit there waiting for church to start on your phone. Yeah. Boy, that went over real good. Might be sitting there having a prayerful attitude. Lord, bless the service tonight. Lord, help somebody tonight. Somebody might be low. I pray you'd lift them up. Lord, I, I pray you'd save somebody tonight. Lord, help the preacher tonight. Lord, help the singer tonight. Boy, isn't that a lot better than sitting there on Facebook? It's called obeisance. Hmm? Listen, there's nothing wrong with being on your phone unless you're looking at something you shouldn't look at. But there is something wrong about being on your phone while you're in the house of God. It's showing disrespect to the Lord. Can I say there's certain words that you should never say inside the church house? And by the way, I believe if you can't say it in here, you shouldn't say it out there. Hmm? Hmm, but why is it that some people don't have any problem? Just saying something that doesn't honor the Lord because they don't respect the Lord. Hmm? Hmm. There are certain ways that we ought to look when we come to the house of God. Hmm? 
Now, I could really upset. Where's Brother Brian? I ain't picked on him all night. You look awful lonely tonight, bro. Uh, let me come and say hi to you. How you doing, bro? Good to see you. I, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, they probably want me to finish the message. So I'll, I'll pick this up later. All right. Huh? I could absolutely upset people's apple cart if I taught on how the high priest had to cleanse himself and dress before he went into the house of God. Because in Revelation 1 6, it says that we've been made kings and priests. Amen. I don't need a high priest anymore because I have the great high priest, the Lord Jesus, but he's made me a priest. So there's certain ways I'm supposed to look when I come into the house of God. You know, if the high priest didn't do everything just right and look the right and wear the right stuff and have it all just done just perfect, his life was required of him. Right. See, it's life or death, but yet Joe Olstein and the casual crowd, well, it's just good that you got to come tonight. For who? I thought this isn't service. I thought this was worship. So we're coming to worship Him. Amen. Service happens outside these doors. Right. So our look should be a certain look. It shows respect unto the Lord. It could also show disrespect. Hmm? I've seen people wear things to church that used to. They wouldn't even wear to a nightclub. Yep. Hello, you're welcome. Didn't cost you anything. Uh, uh, boy, I know where my notes, but I figured if I'm going to get you, you know, on Tuesday night, I might as well just load you up. Hmm? Uh, obeisance is about reverence and it's about respect. You know why some people, Brother Ron, don't, don't care about what they wear? They don't respect themselves. Right. Hmm? As a child of God, you are above the rudiments of this world. Amen. You shouldn't act like the world. You know what happens when the church starts acting like the world? It becomes worldly. But yet the Bible says he's coming back for a church without spot and without wrinkle. Can I say? Obeisance also deals with relinquishing your own will, strength, and goals to Him. I don't know what it was. Brother Adrian, you remember about 10 years ago, they kept, uh, you kept hearing all this, what are your goals as a Christian? What are your goals as well? I'll tell you what, mine is heaven. That's my goal. Uh, and that's already been established. But truly being obedient, and showing obeisance to the Lord says my will my strength all of my hopes and dreams lie at your feet not my will but thine be done hmm? uh, but yet it amazes me how many people are so regimented on their plans for their life where's God where's God obeisance says well I'll plan but the Lord's in control, and He can change my plans at any time. Listen, I don't think you ought to take a dart, you know, a dart and throw a dart to a dartboard and say, well, if I hit this, that's what I'm going to do with my life. You ought to have some structure in your life. The Bible teaches, let everything be done decent and in order. But don't order the Lord out of your life. He needs to be the A and the Amen. Well, now that I made everybody, man, let me give you the last thought. The sacrifice of thanksgiving means to openly acknowledge the Lord. Look with me, if you will, in verse 18. Look what he says. I will pay my vows unto the Lord in my prayer closet where nobody can see me. Is that what it says? No. He said, I'll pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem. He is openly acknowledging the goodness of God in his life. Romans chapter 10 tells us when we get born again, he said that we'll not be ashamed. Jesus said if we was ashamed of him, then he'd be ashamed of us before his father. To offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving means to openly acknowledge who the Lord is in your life and what he's done for you. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. How is that sorry, sin-cursed world going to know about the goodness of God unless we openly tell them right. how good God's been? Hmm? 
preached on transparency one time. A lot of people, they come to the house of God and they're not transparent. That's all, oh, everything's fine. When everything's not fine. There's nothing wrong with standing up, and I'm not talking about airing your dirty laundry, but stand up and say, would you all pray for me? I'm really going through it. That's being transparent. And you know what will happen? God's people will rally around you and they'll pray for you. Huh? It's okay to openly acknowledge, I need the Lord's help. The psalmist cried, help, Lord, and the Lord helped him. There's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I'm struggling. And there's also nothing wrong with standing up and saying, hey, this, in, in spite of me, God's been good to me. Nothing wrong with that. You're openly acknowledging the goodness of God in your life or the need for God in your life. Nothing wrong with that. He said he's going to pay his vows. He's going to do it in the presence of God's people. He's going to do it in the house of God. He's going to do it in Jerusalem. He's going to do it everywhere. Lord, help us to openly acknowledge when we need him or how good he's been or how kind he's been or how merciful he's been. Because, friend, the old songwriter said it best, every hour I need him. And when we openly acknowledge that, he gets glory. God, help us to learn to offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving every single day. That's how we'll impact our world. I get so tired of them lumping us up with everybody else. But you know what? It's an indictment against us because they don't see any difference in us. They ought to see a whole different crowd than they see out there, the folks that claim that they're, they're Christian. And they deny the Bible. They deny the goodness of God. They deny the holiness of God. They deny the Lord Jesus himself. God help them to see something different in us. Hmm? They ought to see a better attitude. They ought to hear praise of the Lord. And it's okay even if they think we're crazy because we go to church all the time. That's okay. Because when their, their world turns upside down, we're going to be the first people they come seeking Will you pray for us? Huh? God help us to learn the secret of the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song. Maybe you want to come and tell the Lord you're thankful for all he's done in your life. Maybe tonight he spoke to you and you just want to come and talk to him about it. Maybe tonight you just got a burden. You want to come lay at his feet. I don't know. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, why don't you come? We'd love to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved tonight. As they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, we bless you. You've been so good to us. Lord, help us to learn the secret of the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Help us to walk therein every day that others can see the goodness of God and come and trust in you. Now, Lord, bless. You know every heart tonight. You know every need. I pray for Brother Daniel and his family. Lord, I pray for others that have needs here tonight. Oh, God, I pray you'd undergird them. And, God, you'd show your mighty hand of grace. Now, Lord, blessing this invitation. Lord, I don't know anybody's heart. God, if there's somebody here tonight that doesn't know you, I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. Bless this invitation now. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on Sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.